Hello everyone, thanks for dropping by. Today I'd like to share with you an issue I came across when recording game sounds for my demo soundboard. It relates to harmonics and how they, if you're not careful, can cause you extra work when trying to translate sounds from the real world to be replicated by a sound chip. The soundboard I made uses the AY38910 sound chip. I'll make a video sometime describing the process so you can use these chips yourself to generate sounds. But today I'll focus on the first step which is sound characterization and show you how harmonics can be a source of confusion when undertaking this step. In order to get a chip to produce sounds we need to formulate instructions on what sounds to make at what time and at what amplitude. The first step in this process is to record the sound. Then using instrumentation we can figure out the structure of the sounds. This is an example of the startup chirps from the game Burger Time. These are presented here as the output of a spectrograph. A spectrograph plots frequency intensity on the vertical axis over time on the horizontal axis. To give you a better idea of what's going on here, here's a variable pitch tone with its corresponding spectrograph trace. Traditionally, spectrographs were used in linguistics in order to analyze sounds used to produce speech. One, here's an example. Two, three, four, five. It's quite clear from this that speech sounds contain a complex set of frequencies. I find the spectrograph very handy for characterizing game sounds. Going back to our earlier image of the Burger Time stun-up chirps, what you see represented here sounds like this. Time moves from left to right, so you can see that the tones start at low frequencies and rise quickly in pitch. This spectrograph looks like a mess of tones. My sound chip only has three tone generators. How am I meant to program all of these tones here? And the ones above, do these need to be characterized and included in our sound program? The clue to the answer of this question is that these tones appear at exactly three times the frequency of the original or fundamental ones. As it turns out, these are harmonics of the original tones. So the key fact here is that these sounds are not being produced as separate program tones, but they're artifacts of the tone waveform. In other words, these harmonic tones occurring at frequencies that are multiples of the original fundamental frequencies do not need to be included in our programming. This knowledge will save you a lot of time. Therefore, in our example, we only need to use two tone generators to produce the required sounds. In our example, the harmonics are at frequencies of three times the fundamentals. But why is this the case? Why aren't the harmonics at two times or six times the fundamental? Or why are there any harmonics at all? This goes to the heart of describing complex waveforms. Complex waveforms are made up of individual frequencies of different amplitudes, and it's these that give the resulting waveform its distinctive sound. A complex waveform is made up of a number of individual sine wave frequencies, and to figure out what these frequencies are, we can use a mathematical process known as a Fourier transform. This waveform appears to be chaotic and disorganized. But in fact, it's simply the sum of these sine waves. These sine waves each have a single frequency, but when summed together or added together, they produce complex waves. To reiterate, the sum of all of the individual sine waves shown here produces this. Another name for these waveforms is harmonics. Harmonics can be considered as the frequencies that make up a complex waveform. And in the cases we'll cover in this video, they occur at frequencies that are multiples of the fundamental frequency. In other words, they occur at twice, three times, four times the fundamental frequency, and so on. The takeaway point here is that 
different complex waveforms are made up of different harmonics. The sine wave is considered a pure waveform, and so has no harmonics, in theory anyway. In reality, a sine wave is almost never pure, so there are always some harmonics. These harmonics are spaced at multiples of the fundamental frequency. As you can see here in this spectrograph, we have a 1 kHz sine wave. The fundamental frequency of 1 kHz dominates strongly, as shown by the dark, heavy line. But there's also a weak harmonic at twice the fundamental frequency and a weaker one still at three times the fundamental frequency. These harmonics are known as the second and third harmonics, respectively. Remembering that different waveforms have different harmonic compositions, let's now look at a square wave. A square wave essentially represents the movement between two states without any intermediate states. In this spectrograph image, you can see clearly the fundamental frequency of 1 kHz. The third harmonic is also present, but the second harmonic has disappeared. Remember our original problem with the appearance of a third harmonic in our burger time chirps? This absence of the second harmonic and the presence of the third harmonic indicates that the tone is not a sine wave, but most likely a square wave. In the case of the AY38910 chip, it can only produce square wave tones. In addition to the spectrograph, we can visually represent these sine and square waves on an oscilloscope using the fast Fourier transform function. Unlike the spectrograph, which displays frequency over time, the FFT represents amplitude over frequency. This sine wave's fundamental frequency is set to 4 kHz. In this case, we can see most harmonics, both even numbered, so the second, fourth, sixth harmonic, and odd numbered, third, fifth, and seventh harmonic. We can see that these ones are present. With this sine wave, both even and odd harmonics are present. However, this sine wave isn't a pure sine wave. If it were a pure sine wave, we would only see the first harmonic, which is the fundamental, which in this case is 4 kHz. Now compare this with the example of the 4 kHz square wave on the right. Here you can see that the odd harmonics, the third, fifth and seventh harmonics, clearly dominate. In this way, a characteristic of a square wave is the property of having only odd harmonics. Also notice that the harmonic content overall for the sine wave is much smaller. This is because it is closer to a pure sine wave, which theoretically contains only a fundamental frequency. There's a lot of mathematics that is well beyond my ability that would do a much better job of answering this question. However, if we look at the waveforms as amplitude over time, with their harmonic superimposed on the fundamental waveform, we do see something interesting. This is an idea that I've seen elsewhere on the internet, so I'll leave some links in the description box that go further into this. This image shows the fundamental frequency, in black, plotted with two even harmonics superimposed. You'll notice that the harmonics cross the 180 degree point in opposition to the fundamental. Contrast that with the odd harmonic waveforms. In this case, only the odd harmonics cross the 180 degree point with the same polarity as the fundamental. So perhaps it's this property that's critical to the formation of the square wave. So far I've been ignoring the amplitude of the harmonics in these diagrams. By going back to the FFT and obtaining the relative amplitudes and plugging these values into a spreadsheet, we can get a clearer understanding of what's going on. The image on the left shows the relative strengths of the fundamental and all harmonics, according to the FFT analysis. The harmonics are relatively tiny, and when we add these to the fundamental, we get the waveform you see on the right. So although our sine wave on the right isn't pure, it's really quite difficult to see any distortion at all. On the other hand, 
The square wave has relatively large harmonics. On the left you can see the fundamental in black, with the harmonics superimposed in their relative strengths. The second and fourth harmonic, the red and orange traces respectively, are really tiny. However, the third harmonic in grey and the fifth harmonic in blue are quite significant in size. When the fundamental and these harmonics are added together, we start to see the approximation of a square wave. Remember that I've only added the first five harmonics here. If we were to continue adding additional harmonics, dominated by odd harmonics, the waveform would progressively approximate the familiar square wave shape that we're used to seeing. So if you've made it this far, well done, congratulations. The main point of this video is to illustrate that different waveforms have different harmonic structures, and that's very important and very useful to know when you're analysing and characterising sounds. For those who are keen, let's wind up this video with a bit of a test. So the following is a spectrograph of a loud annoying sound that was coming from a building across the street. The sound source was probably 100 metres or 300 feet away from the microphone. It was a really, really loud and obnoxious sound. Looking at the spectrograph, do you think the sound was a sine wave or a square wave? And given your answer, what kind of physical process was most likely creating the sound? Do you think it might be from a reciprocating motion or a rotating motion? I'm looking forward to seeing your answers. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, or if you've spotted any errors, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.